Mm. From me, and not surprisingly, to start with health as a former public health minister, and uh, very much enjoyed working with the minister's predecessor on creating some of the plans that, that we're now seeing from the government. The, the child obesity strategy in part two, which I was responsible for bringing into place, was very important in terms of the, the obesity crisis already been mentioned that we face in this country today. It was not all about the sugar tax, although I might place on record how important that is and how that must continue despite protestations to the contrary. Um, it was about moving more and about giving children options to use cycling. As uh, the Minister's predecessor said, it is about producing plans that mean a 12-year-old can cycle on the roads with some sort of confidence. Secondly, money and infrastructure. I was a former vice chair of the All Party Group on Cycling when I first came into this House. We recommended in our Get Britain Cycling report that was published in April 2013 that we should create a cycling budget of £10 per person. And I want to pay tribute to the government because, as has been said, uh, investment in cycling and walking in England has trebled since 2010 from around £2 per person annually to around £7.50 per person now. That is a success story. The, one of the other key recommendations of that report, and of course um, has been mentioned so many other times since, is that local authorities should deliver cycle-friendly improvements to their existing roads. We'll hear a lot this morning about new developments and how they must be connected up with cycle roads, and of course they must. But like housing, most of our um, housing is existing housing. Most of our roads are existing roads, and I want to see them transformed. And finally, locally in Winchester, we have a, a new local community action group called uh, Cycle Winchester, which is obviously campaigning to make the city better by bike. It is an excellent organisation. It's organised many cycle, mass cycle rides in the centre of Winchester, and what it's doing is it's now working with the local councils. We have something called the City of Winchester Movement Study, which says that a, an important element of the movement study will be a local cycling and walking infrastructure plan. So my question to the government is that Cycle Winchester is a charity. It's a very good charity. It's very dedicated, and it's run by people who absolutely want to see cycling better in the, in the area that I represent. But what support can the government give to Cycle Winchester? Um, the member for Whitney talked about the comprehensive spending review. That's surely where we've got to look. We've talked about here about net zero ambition within this uh, parliament around uh, carbon emissions, and that's really important. But local authorities are going to be the ones that have to deliver so much of this. So, yes, they might produce a, an infrastructure plan, but how are we? They, they only have a, an intention to do so, and the government wants them to do so, but the government doesn't require them to do so. My councillor has produced a climate emergency, but what does that mean in terms of cycling paths and dedicated cycle routes, which is the key? We've got to keep cyclists and cars separate, and that means dedicated cycle lanes, and that ultimately means investments, but it means making sure that local authorities carry through with their intentions and make sure that it actually happens. Thank you.